Okay, so let's get this out of the way. Um, now, a course that I've been told about a few times uh, that I played uh, yesterday, actually the day before Christmas, on my golfing um, excursion trifecta, because I haven't been playing a lot uh, the last couple of months, so I really wanted when I, I had a lot of time. I'm not, I'm not dealing with the um, shutdown, the Trump down. Let's put it that way, <laughs> the Trump down. But I am, I am dealing with the fact that our company had um, Monday and Tuesday off this week because um, we shut down early, you know, for the holidays. So. Um, I had four, four days to play. I had four days. I literally had three or four days. I'm sitting around. The weather's gorgeous. It's gorgeous today. It's Christmas Day. It's nice weather. It's a little colder today than it was early in the week, but it's still nice weather. I could certainly go out and play today. And I was like, all right, fine. I'm taking my clubs. I'm just going to jump in the car. I'm gone. You know, I'm gone for a couple of days and come back. Ended up, I would, after I played um, Man of War on, a, uh, I guess it was Sunday, I said, I'm not going to take the risk of going down to Virginia Beach National. And I mean, I'd wanted to, I wanted to go down there and check it out. I looked at the reviews. This is a PB die course. It's slope 145 from the back tees. It's 7150 from the back tees. And I was like really interested because I really hadn't had, I really hadn't played a tough course in a while, like a legitimately tough course. 145 is Beth Page Black from the back tees. Okay. So 145, one, there's, there's not a lot of 145 courses in the Maryland district area, um, that are public courses. This course had definitely caught my eye and I wanted to try it. First was because it was PB died. Second, because of slope 145. But I didn't, I, after I'd played the first two courses and I was sitting at the top of, um, Ocean City there, you know, next to Man of War. I was like, man, it's a two and a half hour drive down to this course to play it. I don't know if I really want to push my luck and drive all the way down there, play the course and drive all the way back. But I'm glad I did. I'm glad that sanity prevailed. And I said, you know what? You're already four hours out of DC. <laughs> okay. It's not really four hours out of DC, but it's three hours or so to get down there. Um, why would you want to go all the way back and then wait until you have a good chance to play again and then drive back here, which is seven hours of driving, then drive two hours south, then drive two hours back, which makes it 11 hours, then another, you know, whatever, back to, to D.C. from Ocean City. Go play. Yeah, yeah I, I really hadn't played three courses, you know, three days in a row in my life ever, honestly. So I didn't know if I could hold up, you know, my body would hold up and everything. I figured I'd be really tired or muscles would be really sore or something. I said, screw it. We're taking a chance. We go down there. We go down there. I get down to Virginia Beach and Virginia Beach is a, a nice place. To, it's a really nice place to go through in some, a lot of sections of it. Not all of it, but a lot of it. And also the problem is there's a lot of traffic, a lot of roads, a lot of everything. And to get to Virginia National from Ocean City it is a long drive down 113 from Ocean City and then down 13 from um, Farmington or Farmingdale or whatever it is. Um, down all the way across the, the ocean, um, the, the South Bay Bridge Tunnel, and which is $14, by the way, it was. And it's going to go up to $15. It's both ways, $15. It's not like you get a break one way. You go all the way down there and then you got to drive for like, 45 minutes through Virginia beach through, um, Norfolk to get to the course. So I ended up going down there and I stopped along the way, um, and just took a, a, a break for like about five hours, got there at the course at seven 30, checked it out. I drove on a course. I was really disappointed. Okay. I was like, Oh man, this is from what you can see from the, um, the road going to the clubhouse, it's got this old colonial style, um, brick clubhouse. There's actually like three of them. There's a dining room, there's a the cart, um, maintenance facility, and there's a clubhouse proper and they're nice and big and colonial style and everything. And it's all great. And, but the course is what you can see for, of the course is flat Bermuda, white grass, just flat, flat, flat 
almost no trees because you can't see the course from there. You really can't see the course from the road or from the parking lot. You have to go on the course to see the course. Now, because this was Christmas Day, this is the last over way my thing. Okay, because it was Christmas Day, or the day, sorry, the day before Christmas, Christmas Eve. Okay, they were closing the course at two o'clock. So if I had tried to go down there the day before, I would have gotten there at like three, and I wouldn't have had time to play anyway. I, I knew that that was one reason. But second, they wouldn't even have. They may not even have let me get on the course after noon. Okay. Because it did get dark around 4 o'clock, 4.30. So I, I wouldn't have had time to play 18 holes if I had played it after 12. So luckily I said, well, we'll go down there and we'll play it tomorrow. We'll get down there early and play it in the morning. So I get down there and they're like, um, okay, you know, it's $50 with a cart. I was, okay, that's cool. At least it wasn't like 100 or 150 And um I say, well, can I get a tea time around 10, 30, 11 o'clock? Because I wanted to let it warm up. It was 37 degrees. I just got out of the car for three hours. And um, it, I was stiff. It was cold. It was windy. And I was like, I don't want to go out and play golf right now. It's cold. It's windy. And, and, I, and I don't, I'm just, you know, and I'm not going to hop onto a, a, a 145 course, try to play from the back tees right after I got out of the car. The guy looks at me and goes, no, no. We're closing at two o'clock. I was like, "Oh shit, you, you're gonna you, you can't play a single." I, I can put you in with these two guys at um, at uh, eight forty-five. I went into the clubhouse at eight thirty. I barely had enough time to walk out to the car, get my clubs, and walk back to the course, get in a cart, and drive to the tee box. And the guys that they had put me with in were were just, you know had just teed off and they were, a, you know, a shot out. So the guy comes over, uh, another guy comes over, weren't you supposed to be going out with this guy at 845? And I said, I just got my clubs and got to the course. I, didn't, I haven't had a chance to even take a practice swing. And he was like, well, you're gonna, you know, you can go up there and, um, and, and catch up with them or I'll, I'll wait and put you back with uh, you know, another group after you, which there's a part, there's a foursome after you. I was like, do you mind if I at least take this shot? I'll go out there and catch them and, and then whatever. And I said, like, all right, fine. So I hit. And um, so they were playing for the blue tees. I was playing. I normally play for the blacks, but they were playing for the blue tees. And I was in this situation where I didn't have time to warm up. I said, fine, I'll run out. I'll play them, you know, catch up and play them with the, from the blue tees. Now, let me tell you something. This course was actually not a bad course at all. It wasn't It wasn't the PB die course in... Um, I guess it's Germantown or somewhere near Germantown on the other side of 270. It wasn't that wooded, you know, waste filled monstrosity. It's all tight shots and, you know, crescents and blinds and hitting through alleys and stuff like that. And there's a couple of other PD deck, PB deck courses that I played also. It wasn't really not like any of them. It was much more of a course timer. The last time I did this, I, Ran off the end of the timer, which was really annoying. Um, okay, so let me just say this in the eight, in the one minute I have left here. Um, before this section runs out, it was really like a big, wide open course with mostly wide. A reason, I'd say reasonably wide, but not too wide fairways. A lot of this Bermuda grass, which at the time was all white, and it was <clears throat> a lot of waste, uh, some water. You know, there was definitely some drop offs. You know, like elevated fairways where you you know you walk down to the to the tee box. I'm sorry, to the cart path. I've seen this in a few courses. You're playing. It's like it's like a strip or a lane. The first two holes, especially for stripper lane, and they you know curve over to the left in the crescent, but they're elevated above the car path, so the ball can go off the edge of the car path. I mean, off the edge of the fairway, and just bounce down off the car path and bounce down into the woods. So it it was a little tricky. And on the inside of that, you have um, a lake, marsh, waste, you know, kind of thing. And then what I what we saw as we went through the course was that the course had been soaked. It had been absolutely soaked so it was flooded and then had, the water had receded 
So the point was, it was a really surprising course in the sense that it was not um, not heavily wooded for the most part. I think there's only one or two holes where there's actually trees on um, both sides of the fairway. And one hole where there's really, it's tight in, in terms of that, in terms of trees off the tee box and then the fairway, which is you know a woods course kind of hole. And there's another hole where it's like a, you're, you're teeing off and you're hitting to a dog leg left, but the, there's a stand of trees on the left side. I think it's the third hole. You stand of trees on the left side and there's woods on the right side and you've got a landing area out there, but you need to play back and to the left down a narrow chute to get to the green. There's only a few holes where the trees are actually a real factor in, in play. The big factor on most of the holes is there's, if you can imagine this, there's, um, a fairway which stretches out, it's about um, 100 yards wide, maybe 75 to 100 yards wide. And then there's some Bermuda grass uh, on the sides. It's soft, fluffy grass, kind of like a moss, but like a, 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 you know, like shag carpet, let's say. And that might stretch for another 20 yards. And then there's a waste area on the left or a, 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 um, a, a pond or a lake on the left. And on a couple of holes, there's actually a lake on both sides of the fairway. Um, if there's not a lake on at least one side of the fairway, there's woods and a lake, or there's a big sand trap, like 15 yards wide, border between the fairway and the rough, and then, I should say, the, the mossy Bermuda grass, and then the lake or a stand of rough. So the course is really, it's not really... Um, I think it's a lot different than just about any other course I played. It's there's almost no verticality. There's some verticality, but not much verticality. There are some tabletop greens, but not many. Mostly in the on the back, you'll see tabletop greens. But the the big feature, the big outstanding feature of this course is it is so big, yet not too big. It's so wide, yet not too wide, but it's still really a hitter's course. It's still really a course where you have to hit long shots. I mean, almost every hole I'm playing, you know, driver, three iron, driver, three iron. And par five is just like driver, three iron, three iron, you know, three iron. Because usually it would take me an extra stroke to get to the green, even from the blue tees. I imagine it, the back tees were usually a slightly more awkward, in some case, significantly more awkward tee shot because... They were, they were at an angle off to the side. So there were a lot of uh, crescent shots where the uh, blue, tee, blue tees were in line with the uh, crescent, but the black tees were to the inside, so you had to hit more across the width of the fairway. And there were a lot of shots where there's just this big section of of lake or a big section of waste or something to the inside of the shot and you had to hit to the fairway and then off there were maybe a, a small stand of trees or an, another stand of waste or something off to the left so it was it was un, wide enough for you to go out there and hit especially with the wind we we, we had a little um wind in the morning certainly wide enough for you to go out there and hit and hit away just hit away but you still had to keep from spinning the ball. You couldn't really, you know, spin it too much. You definitely couldn't let the wind carry it away because it was easy to get into the water and easy to get into the waist to the left. So it was, it was sort of a good balance, but it, man, it was a, just a big expanse of course. The one thing I would take away from this course for the, for the most part, almost on every hole is there was just so much space. There was, there was really no trees out there, you know, a few trees here and there, staying here and there. But for the most part, the lake was just half the shot you saw and a large stand of waste and, and marsh and stuff um, was another half of the shot you saw. And then there was a fairway in the middle. And it was a really, i say it was a decent course. And again, I'm glad I went down there and played it in December because, again, not hot. Usually Virginia is scorching hot to play golf in the summer, especially from like May until October. 
just scorching hot, a lot of bugs. Wasn't a problem. Um, the wind was a little bit more than we wanted it, but it wasn't a huge problem. And you know, you're either playing into the wind or across the wind or downwind. And I, I think it was a, a fun course to play, but it wasn't nearly as fun, I would say, as Man of War. It was, it was okay. It was good. It was a hitter's course. You hit a lot of long shots, a lot of just balls just gone, gone. You got to go, you know, 450. I mean, let me read off the T chart here. And this is from the blue tees, not from the blacks. Okay. Um, yardage from, from the blue tees. 379, par 4. 360, 402, par 4. 152, par 3. 360, par 4. 517, par 5. 375, par 4. 156, par 3. 532, par 5. And 384, par 4. Now, that's not bad. That's, that's not really long, okay? What made it a challenge was... Half of those shots are into the wind. Half of those holes are into the wind. Half of those holes are across the wind. And one or two of them might be downwind, you know, but most of them you're playing either into the wind or across the wind trying to play these shots. Now, from the back tees, I think it probably would have been um, another club, another shot harder from the back tees because there, was, there would be a greater chance that you're going to um, either hit the ball left or right into trouble or too long and into the woods behind the fairway. But I still think that playing it from the back tees, it was 3,500 yards out and from the black tees and 3,300 yards from the, from the blue tees. It was really kind of long enough from the blue tees to be a good challenge. And the back tees would have been a, a better challenge. But to, what to me was really the disappointing part was that the difficulty of the course really was in staying out of the water and waste, not in getting on the green because only so many... I think there's only three three holes that were tabletop greens. The rest of them were all down at fairway level. And the big part of it was, you know, do you hit a high iron, you know, with this wind, with the water sometimes running literally right up to the edge of the green or within 50 feet of the green? Um, or do you try to bump and run? And what I found fairly quickly was it was almost impossible to bump and run in this course. The fairways were at least a little soggy. and all of our tee shots were, were hitting and you know, either plugging or bouncing once and stopping. Because if you hit the Bermuda grass, it would just bounce and, and just stop right right about there if the ball had any height on it. And it if you hit the Bermuda grass with a chip shot, like a like you hit a seven iron bump and run, it would just bounce and then like bounce five feet and then just roll into the Bermuda grass and stop. So there wasn't a lot of bumping and running except in a few holes where it's an uphill lie and you're in the fairway and you're hitting into the slope of the uphill onto the green and there's it's you have a straight shot down the center of the fairway where you can bump and run. The greens were almost all huge. They were almost all like gently oscillating kind of greens that were tough to um to read and to make putts on. But they were so big, it was easy to end up, you know, 50 feet away from the pin if you weren't careful, and then have to, you know, two putt 50 feet back and stuff. And and it was a challenging course to play short as much as it was to play long. I I certainly have to say it was a tougher course than Man of War, certainly tougher than Renditions. But I still wouldn't say it's as hard as some of the PB Dye courses I played, largely because the, the greens were just a little bit too easy to play. You just there were sand traps, there were some you know good waist size and and, and uh, mid chest size sand traps and stuff like that. But it just wasn't that tough of a course. I wouldn't say it was a 145 course. I'd say it was more like a 135, 140 course. Certainly not a 145 course. It definitely was not as tough as Beth Page. And the reason what being is there just was no waste around the greens. Maybe some water around the greens, but no real waste. Certainly not waste around the sand traps. Certainly not sand traps bordered with, with high grass. It That stuff just really wasn't in play. It just really wasn't that tough of a course. Okay, so to wrap it up, I would have a hard time recommending this course as a real go-to course. I think it was a good experience. I'm glad I played it. I'm glad I did not drive down there six hours. It took me about, um, 
I left there at two because they closed at two. Left there at two. Um, barely had time to have a hot dog at the turn and a coffee at the end. Uh, they were, you know, really trying to push people out of the course and left uh, the course at two. Drove back to DC. I got back to DC at I'd say six o'clock. Coming up 95. There really wasn't that much traffic on 95. It wasn't bad. There was no backup. There was a backup um, down in Newport News because someone, there was a three or four car accident on a side, but they still had two lanes open. So there was still traffic was moving through and it wasn't that much backed up when I got there. So it was, it cost me maybe 10 minutes. Um, sad to say somebody ended up in a ditch next to the highway upside down on Christmas Eve. Uh, who knows how many people were affected by that. Um, I wish them good luck or whatever, um, as far as their recovery from that. Uh, that was the one, that was the one low, low point of the ride back. I enjoyed the ride back. It was nice weather, stopped, you know, got something, it was, everything was good and got back into DC without too much trouble at all. Got back about, um, three and a half, four hours at the most driving. And I would have to say that it, it would be nice to drive down there and play this course because it was fairly unique. It certainly was a hitter's course that wasn't one of those courses where you're trying to play, you know, tough drives or tough approach shots or tough irons. It wasn't that hard of a course like, say, Whiskey Creek, where, you know, it there are some really tough tee shots on Whiskey Creek and it's 7,000 yards. I, I wouldn't say it was as tough as... Um, Bueller Rock for sure, because there weren't a lot of carries. As a matter of fact, if you play the blues, there were almost no carries. Or if the worst, the carry was 50 yards or something like that. The blacks might have had another, you know, 75 yards added to it. Almost no carries from the uh the T boxes, either the blue or blacks. The real trouble was just not hitting in the water, the abundant water, either on your approach shots to the greens or on your irons or your, you know, on the fairway or your driver. And certainly there are waste and low, low lying, um, sand traps on the sides that you had to watch out for abundant water, but it really wasn't that hard of a course. The biggest problem I had was I was playing for the third day, three days in a row. And by the time I got to the 16th hole, my arm just pumped up and I had to change my grip. I had to go to a really strong grip to even be able to get any distance to the ball. So I, I shagged a couple of holes there at the end. I, I thought I was going to easily make it under 100 without a problem. Got a little cocky and um, tried to hit a couple of dumb shots. One thing I have to say really is as long as you didn't try to hit hero shots on this course, you weren't going to have much of a problem with it. You, you just had to play your normal game, not try to hit anything special. You'd be fine. I was okay. And then I, I think I like the... 15th or 16th hole, my, my right arm, forearm just literally swelled up. I could feel every, like the sheath. I think the whole thing with arm pump is you get like the sheath and everything under your arm just, just swells up. It becomes full of fluid, high pressure. I, I felt that, try to play through it a little bit, felt it like rip and tear in a couple places and the pressure sort of ease off. But um, still, I, I had no strength in my, in my right hand. So I switched to a strong grip and was playing hockey golf there for a while and made it through the last two holes, which were okay. Nice holes, long, you know, lakeside par fours, the kind which can be deadly, deadly if you're spinning balls into the wind or, you know, yanking shots off to the left into the lake or, or slicing them off to the right because you're trying to hit really hard. Luckily, I, I wasn't able to do that and it wasn't wide enough, I mean, uh, narrow enough or anything where I really had a problem. Nice picturesque course. I would say it was a mediocre difficulty level course that was fairly long. And it was just a nice experience. Certainly a country club type feel to the place, but it wasn't tough. And the only thing that really made it tough at all was the wind. And when the wind died down, once we got to around the 12th hole, it, the wind died down, everything settled down, the sun came out, it was all nice and everything. 
and it was just a shame that there weren't any leaves on the trees and everything. But at the same time, it wasn't hot. It wasn't oh so hot and oh so humid as it can get in Virginia. Probably even in, in cause we were well away from the beach. It's at least 10 miles away from the beach. So a good experience. I would say if I was in the area, I would definitely try to play this course. If I could get it for a decent price, I would definitely try to play this course. But I don't know if I would really recommend going down there from DC to play it. It was okay. And certainly I've played worse courses along the, the beach and the shore and down in Rappahannock and all that kind of stuff. Or tougher courses or worse courses, depending on how you would look at it. It was not a woods course at all. But I'm not sure there was anything that filled the gap. Let's put it that way. Other than, you know, it looked nice. Big fairways, nice challenging shots, lots of water, that kind of stuff. And it had houses on at least three of the holes. There's a row of condos that goes alongside um, at least two of the holes. And uh, there's the main road and there's a highway. You can hear the, the, the um, highway some other highway. There's a lot of highways in the area. You can hear the noise on the highway. We heard sirens and trucks and all kinds of stuff when we were playing. It was, wasn't that far off the course. It wasn't quiet. It wasn't isolated. It wasn't a lot, but it was fun golf. I, I admit it was a good challenge. If you're a if you try to, you think you're a long hitter, a good challenge. You, it certainly was not long and tight. It was long and fairly open and you could, if you think that you can hit 225 or uh, three wood, you can hit it 2 250 or whatever. This is a good course to go out and play that kind of game. But other, otherwise, you know, okay, worth the time, worth the money, maybe. But it's not something I would go. I'm going to put this on my calendar in six months. That's going to be the highlight of my season. So I give the course, I have to give it a B. I really do. I, I just don't think it had much character. It was okay. It was a good course, but it wasn't great. It was challenging, but it wasn't that tough. I don't see how a 135, uh, the blues were rated. Um, uh, let's see. I know there were 145 from the blacks. The blues were probably rated about 140. I don't think it was that tough. I was, I was literally on pace to break a hundred until my arms pump started and um i was i was 20 over through the the 13th through the 14th okay i had four holes to play and eight strokes to give away i i don't and even considering the balls that i lost on the front side you know it just was not that tough a course especially after the wind died so certainly a good b a good course not bad at all that's virginia national golf course and, and certainly a, a decent clubhouse and everything. I didn't really get a chance to eat there, but it was, it was close to as good as Man of War's clubhouse was. Um, but you want to get there and play. Obviously, Virginia, you want to play there a little earlier than you do in Maryland because they'll probably close the course earlier. They almost always do close courses earlier in Virginia than they do in uh, other places. Uh, they don't really tend to stay open late and you know keep the course open or keep the facilities open. So a good course, definitely a B, Virginia National, sorry, Virginia Beach National uh, Golf Course in uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia.